Have you ever wondered where seabirds fly and how far they go? From sunrise to sunset, what is their destination flying across the ocean? Advances in technologies have enabled researchers to track seabirds thanks to small devices deployed on the birds. Imagine if we could pull together all the knowledge we have on seabird location throughout the year and this at the scale of an entire ocean basin. That is what this project is aiming to do. Collating tracking data from researchers working all around the Atlantic Ocean, we will investigate where Atlantic migratory seabirds go and how they distribute in space and time. Atlantic seabirds have been extensively tracked compared to those in other regions of the world and we will focus on the 51 species that undertake long-distance migrations across the ocean. Seabirds are particularly threatened among bird species, and we will therefore estimate where our Atlantic migrants are the most likely to encounter threats related to human presence, and focusing on those threats that are the most harmful to seabirds. But we won't be looking at threats only. We also need to understand where seabirds benefit from the protection of marine protected areas, these areas of the ocean that are set aside for the conservation of marine ecosystems. Marine protected areas can be very important to safeguard seabird foraging habitats. We will work on identifying sites that may be lacking protection throughout seabirds' journeys and where action is needed to alleviate threats encountered by seabirds. Because understanding species is a first step towards their protection. And how does this project fit into international targets aiming at protecting biodiversity? At the international level, the Convention on Biological Diversity of Kazard's government in 1992 with the aim of conserving biodiversity and the resulting services humans are benefiting from. In 2010, as part of this important convention, a plan was established to conserve biodiversity in the next 10-year period. 20 targets were established to lead to a better state of biodiversity in 2020. But now that we are nearing the end date, what will come in the next 10 years? How will we increase efforts to protect biodiversity? That will be established in 2021, when all parties of the Convention meet and decide on the post-2020 biodiversity framework, currently in the drafting stage. Concurrently to the CBD, 17 Sustainable Development Goals were adopted by all UN Member States in 2015 to make the world a better place by 2030. And this are the ones we are celebrating this week. All these goals and targets are important to plan and organize the conservation of biodiversity, and my project has a specific connection to some of them. Let's start with the IG targets, and most specifically, IG target 11, which states that at least 10% of coastal and marine areas are conserved by 2020. Unfortunately, we have not yet reached this target and we should especially protect areas that are important for biodiversity. However, only 20% of the areas protected are recognized as key biodiversity areas. These areas should be effectively and equitably managed, and there is still a lot of progress to do here. All types of ecosystems should be protected, but it is still unequal. And finally, they should be connected to maintain flows between ecosystems, but that's also still unequal. In May 2021, governments involved in the CBD were meet in Kunming, China, to decide what will be the next targets. It is still in the drafting stage, but some would like to see the management of ecosystems extended to the wider landscapes and seascapes not only focusing on protected areas, while keeping increasing 
the percentages of areas to be protected. These are still tentative numbers, based on scientific evidence, but a decision is still to be made. If we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 14 is specifically focused on the ocean. It is composed of 10 targets linked to different ocean issues, and 3 are related to my project. The sustainable management of marine and coastal ecosystems, with 10% conserved in protected areas, and the increase of scientific knowledge. These international goals are important in giving a direction and targets to improve the state of our environment. And let's not forget that the protection and sustainable management of the natural world is critical to the survival of all species, including humans.